Hey everybody, this is TJR hanging out here with Superfan. Hey everybody. And the little green guy here. And received the latest monthly selection from Vinyl Me Please. Uh, I already know what it is, of course. It's uh, the Nebraska album by Bruce Springsteen. And it's an album I've never listened to before. This is my third selection I have received from them since rejoining the club. Uh, two months ago. Uh, previously, I got uh, Jailbreak's Thin Lizzy. I'm <laughs> Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak, excuse me. Um, uh, and, pr and then prior to that, after that, um, uh, Adventures of Doom Scroller by Dawes. And uh, Finally Please does their own unique and rather limited edition pressings. I had never previously heard this album before either. And listen to it for the first time. I knew the hits, of course, but not the album. This one I actually had heard before. I knew that I liked it. And so I'm going to go ahead here and just unbox this and talk a little bit about uh, Bruce Springsteen. Um, Bruce Springsteen is an artist uh, whose, of course, reputation I'm well aware of. But I'll be honest, I've never gotten that into his music, although I have tried. Um, Born to Run, probably his most well-known album. I've, I've listened to it numerous times. Of course, I like the title track. Uh, there's another song on that album that I really like a lot too. But mostly I listen to that album and I say, okay, it sounds good, but I'm not that into it. Um, and I've tried other albums here and there. Oddly enough though, one album I do have by Bruce Springsteen that I picked up when it was released just because I thought I would try it, is this album entitled The Promise. And The Lost Sessions, Darkness on the Edge of Town. This was, these were sessions from when he was recording the album Darkness on the Edge of Town. And for some reason, this collection of lost sessions is what I like the most from him as far as an overall cohesive piece of work, which I don't know. That's weirdly ironic, but this is what I've liked the most from him, uh, where I've actually enjoyed the whole album. Even though technically speaking, it's not an album really. Robert, on the other hand, loves Springsteen, has, you know, loves all his albums, loves everyone that comes out. He's a huge fan. But let's look at this album here. So here we go. And let me show it to you here. Here we go. Bruce Springsteen, Nebraska. Here's the back. And let me, I'm gonna read the hype sticker here. 40th anniversary edition of Springsteen's haunting homespun masterpiece. Half speed mastered by Barry Grint, alchemy mastering at AIR. Pressed on exclusive 180 gram black smoke vinyl. Listening notes by Peter Armes Carlin, Art print by Justin McHugh, the MP Essentials. And um, like I said, these are their own pressings with their own exclusive liner notes. And I'm just gonna read the Obi strip here on the back. Released on September 30th, 1982, Bruce Springsteen's sixth studio album, Nebraska, came in a stark sleeve dominated by David Michael Kennedy's black and white photograph of a perfectly flat highway stretching down a barren winter time plain. Other artists were inspired by the work. Generations of subsequent musicians ranging from Rage Against the Machine's Tom Morello to pop country singer Kelly Clarkson cited Nebraska as a crucial influence on their careers. Sorry, we had some noise from outside. I asked Superfan to close the window. These come in these resealable um, uh, uh, sleeves here. They sent, they, this is how they always send their albums. Comes with an Obi strip, of course. And let's just pull this out here. And this was the Obi strip that I just read from. And I, again, I got fooled. I thought this was the back cover. This is the back cover. That's because I'm not familiar with this album. This is the print. These always come with an exclusive print here. At least the selections of the month do. And this is some artwork by just Amy Q. There's information about him on the back here. 
He can be found at J-A-M-C-H-U-G-H dot com and at Cross and Switchblade. I guess that's his, I'm guessing that's his Twitter handle. But nice, nice art print here. Suits the album really well. Let's take a look here at the actual album itself. Um, real quality, always real quality packaging. Here's the interior with lyrics. And these booklets are exclusive to the VMP pressings. They include um, exclusive uh, essays, listener notes. Very nice. Uh, I always read these, you know, when I'm checking out the album. But the idea was that they were going to do um, fleshed out studio tracks, you know, from the demo tapes. But as they were doing that, what I've heard is that Springsteen wasn't happy with the studio tracks. He felt that none of them were capturing the immediacy of the demos. So it was decided to just go with the demos instead and just release those as the album. And that's what happened. And... That's probably why the album didn't get a whole lot of radio airplay. I don't think radio was particularly friendly to very sparse acoustic and vocal tracks. I've never listened to this album. I'm curious to hear it. Even though I've never gotten into Springsteen, I'm always open to the possibility that maybe this time around, I'll hear something and feel something different. He certainly has the reputation. And Pretty. I certainly... Huh? Pretty. Yeah, this is the yeah, this is the exclusive sand colored vinyl here. It's kind of translucent. You can see through it. I thought it was smoke gray. That no, I think they said well, maybe you're right. Yeah, they said smoke. Yeah, I think yeah, you're right. That's what it said. I'm sorry, kind of not smoky sand. Looking. It is smoky looking, yeah. But very nice looking. So yeah, I'll listen to this for the first time. I mean, I had never listened to uh Thin Lizzie's Jailbreak album. I knew the two hit singles off the album. But I've never heard the album. I ended up liking the album quite a bit. I hope I like this. We'll see. But, you know, having these, um, these listener notes um, and everything else, you know, maybe I'll gain an appreciation that I didn't have previously. And I do appreciate Springsteen. I do understand his, his importance, even though I personally have never quite gotten into his music. But we'll see what happens. And so I'll listen to this and maybe I'll come back and talk more about it. But this is it here. The latest release from uh, Vinyl Me Please, uh, their latest selection of the month for me. And I joined for six months. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And um, we'll see. And But this is number three. So far, I've enjoyed my last two. We'll check this out. So it has been a couple of days since I did the unboxing of Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen, uh, the VMP Essential release from Vinyl Me Please. And I listened to it for the first time yesterday. Like I've said before, um, Springsteen, you know, Robert, he is such a huge fan. And he delves into Bruce Springsteen's songwriting and knows it as intimately as I delve into and know intimately, say, the songwriting of Elton John and Bernie Taupin. It's that important to us each, separately, those, those two respective artists. And I have liked some songs by Bruce Springsteen. You know, a couple songs up. Born to Run. Um, always thought Born in the USA sounded kind of obnoxious, uh, just musically speaking. Um, a few songs here and there that I've liked, although I did like that one album that wasn't really an album, oddly enough. And so I'm the same way with Dylan. And I've mentioned that in the past. I have an older brother whose music collection was a huge influence, in me, influence on me when I was a kid. And Dylan is the world musically to him and I like a couple Dylan songs you know I like some here and there but I've never really quite gotten into it but I always say you never know uh, when your opinion might change when something will just suddenly hit you musically speaking I'm always trying to be open 
to experiences because you never know. Um, music that I didn't like when I was younger, I ended up liking decades later. And uh, so, you know, I played this album and I can honestly say that I was floored, absolutely floored. Um, I read the booklet that, you know, came with it. This was, these are their exclusive, you know, liner notes that they, they put in their, their, their these selections here. And I was right. Um, he had recorded these as demos on a four track cassette recorder, which was a, a new thing at that time, that this was available. You could buy this, you know, uh, at any guitar center store or whatever. Uh, these Tascam four track, or maybe it was a TAC, but it was one of those brands. You could buy a four track recorder, and he recorded all these demos, expecting to take them into the studio with the band and flesh them out. But nothing was, nothing captured the emotion of those demos with the band. So he actually went to his engineer and said, "Can you master off of this?" And they did. So before I even talk about the songwriting, um, I can't believe how good this just sounds. To think that this was recorded on a four track cassette recorder. I mean, I know some people will say, hey, the Beatles recorded Sgt. Pepper on four track machines. Yes, but these were reel to reel tape machines. Um, a cassette deck, a four track cassette deck. To think that it was mastered off of that. and. I know that VMP does really high quality pressings, you know, that's why they're a record club for, you know, for, for aficionados. And um, this just sounded so amazing. Right from the first note of that acoustic guitar and the harmonica, I think right there, like within seconds, I was just floored by the sound, the, just the, the utter starkness of it. It felt like it was there in the room with me. Like he was there in the room with me, strumming his guitar, playing the harmonica. And there was just, in the first song, Nebraska, such a sense of desperation and isolation in just the emotional tone of the music before we even get into the lyrics, which only add to that whole feeling. Um, the song, and like I said, I don't know any of these songs. Didn't know any of them before I listened to it. The song Nebraska, I sat there, you know, because the lyrics are all here. So I sat there looking at the lyrics as I listened. And, you know, it is about a man and his girlfriend who go on a killing spree. And uh, there's a line at the end where he tells the judge, if you want to know why I done it, well, I guess there's just a meanness in this world. And that line just punched a hole right through me. And all of these songs, um, lyrically, musically, the perform everything, the performance, the sound of the recording, the, the lyrics, all these stories about people, some of them desperate, lonely, hopeless, still sometimes finding hope even in the darkest moments, um, people who live by different codes of life, some that I personally would say I, I don't agree with that, but but still, these are all characters and stories, and as just characters and stories, they're fascinating. Um, I understand one of these songs uh, was turned was actually adapted into like a was not adapted but inspiration for a motion picture. Um, there's also a thing in the book here that I have to read to you here about the recording. Um, let me find it here for you real quick that I just think is fascinating to find out. Um, it talks about how he, you know, he got together with the band and they couldn't match the sound, the emotion of the recordings. And um, so, but then there was something else and I want to read this here. But there was something else, an echoey murk that made the songs even more mesmerizing. Eventually, they traced the sonic eccentricity to the Panasonic boombox Springsteen had used to mix the recordings a few months earlier. The thing had gotten drenched on a boat trip, died on the spot, and then weeks later, unexpectedly came back to life. 
A technically savvy musician might have taken a few moments to check for rust or even applied some cleaning solution to the device heads before using it as a mixing board. But Springsteen didn't. And whatever had rusted or warped inside wound up distorting the signal in a way that harmonized with the twisted heart of the new music. Realizing that no professional recording could ever match what he'd created in his bedroom that night, Springsteen tossed the tape literally to studio engineer Toby Scott. Could they master an album off a cassette? Scott thought they could. A few months later, the album Springsteen titled Nebraska was ready to be released. And that story, that's like I said, just one of those once in a lifetime weird happenings that you can never replicate. And it speaks volumes for the magic and power of human recordings done by human beings, you know, not perfect, flawed, versus doing everything on a computer, you know, quantizing everything to, to, a, to a, you know, to a, 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 a click track. Um, it speaks volumes to that. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't use those tools, but if you use them too much, you just bleed out the humanity. And that's is what's amazing to me about this album. It's just the humanity in it. Even when it's about a man and his girlfriend who go on a killing spree, there's still this just, he's fascinated with these different people in these stories. And, and, and they are real believable characters in these stories, these songs. I have to think this album was a big influence on Patterson Hood of the Drive-By Truckers, who is a band that I'm a huge fan of. And he has often said about his songwriting, I'm a frustrated filmmaker. You know, he tells these sometimes horrifying, sometimes sardonic, sometimes heartbreaking stories about people uh, from different walks of life, sometimes living on the edge, sometimes suffering in, sol in solitude. Um, that are just so emotionally powerful. And I, I have to feel that this album might have been a huge influence on his own songwriting. Um, yeah. And so, all of a sudden, this is the album for me. I don't know if I'm going to listen to more Springsteen at this point, but this album by Springsteen has clicked with me in a way that no other Springsteen album has. Uh, I have listened to Born to Run, the album, numerous times. Because it's a famous album and I keep thinking I should be more into it. And I like the song, the title track. And there's one other song on the album that I really like a lot too that I think really emotionally moves me. The rest of it's just kind of, okay, pretty good, you know. Um, but I'm not like really excited. But this album has really changed that. This has changed my opinion of him. I mean, I always knew he was very talented. He had to be to have such a huge audience, you know. And one time, Robert had tickets for Springsteen. His wife couldn't go with him, so he invited me. And I went with Robert. And, you know, I'm not blind. I can see what a fantastic performer he is, you know. I can see how he earned his reputation, why he has his reputation as a live performer. He's amazing. Um, I should add, because I know I'm going to get some trolls talking about this. Right now, Springsteen is popular to hate right now. Uh, part of it has to do with that whole ticket price scandal that occurred. Although he's doing nothing different than every other, you know, artist selling tickets is doing right now. It's a whole other matter. He's also popular to hate by some people now because he's, he's come out more strong on his political beliefs. Um, I've always thought there's a difference between an artist's politics and their music. And you should learn to separate that when you listen. Ted Nugent is an artist um, who even though a lot of his political beliefs are very contrary to mine, I'm not gonna stop enjoying him as a guitarist. You know, I'm not gonna stop because he's a great guitarist. Um, yeah, you should always separate those things. Anyways though, um, it's really something when it finally hits you. And can't wait to tell Robert because he's such a huge fan and he knows every album. So I'm gonna talk to him about this. Maybe check out something else, um, something I haven't heard before. Of course, I haven't heard any of them before, really, except for Born to Run. I always figured eventually if I played that one enough, I'd like really get into it. So, um, yeah, that was my experience with this one. And um, 
you know, so far I'm really glad I, re I rejoined Final Me Please. I, like I said, I've enjoyed the last three albums I've gotten, but this one here, I was not expecting to respond so strongly to it, and yet I did. That's all, just want to share that with you. Always be open to musical experiences. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, as always, if you like what I do here, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon. And now I want to say thank you to the powerful and mighty patron supporters. Uh, if you're a patron supporter, you get access to exclusive weekly videos not here on the channel. And uh, you also get your name in the credits. And if you'd like to be a supporter, please just go to patreon.com forward slash TJR, the original. And pledge whatever you can. Or make a one-time pledge if that's all you can do. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And uh, hope you all stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.